Hello, dramas and other creatures. This is part five of my series introducing you to the joys of playing jazz drums. It's not just for the virtuosically minded. We can all learn how to play a swing, make it feel good, go out and play some music. In this video, we're going to look at how we apply some accents to the patterns that we've learned how to do. Up till now, I've shown you how to play some, well, the basic swing with the hi-hat foot, the ride going dang, 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 or whatever you want to call it. We've added some complementary patterns. We're comping with the snare drum and the bass drum along with that, using the quarters and the eighth notes. And, and up to now, we've done some fairly simple options, but I provided in the last video or, or attached to the last video, a sheet of little phrases to work on and help you develop your skills in that direction. Um, next, we're gonna look at how we bring a little bit of dynamics into the, the comping patterns or the, 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 whatever you call it, little embellishmenty things, depending on how you're using it. Um, but we're gonna bring some accents into it and then we're gonna look at how we use a kind of crash thing, the jazz crash, which isn't a rock crash at all, but we'll get to that in a minute. So if you've watched the first four videos, you should be reasonably comfortable playing some swing and adding some snare and bass drum melodic patterns a bit like this. But if you've been crushing the ride like that, you're unauthorized. So let's look at how we're gonna do that first, and then maybe we'll, we'll do a little bit of accent exercises. It's pretty simple stuff, but it's just to you know, round things off a little bit. So when we're playing a crash in the jazz setting, very often, and again, these are all like general rules of thumb, but we're, we're gonna play the ride and bring out an accent, and we're not gonna crash the cymbal necessarily in the conventional way that we, we would where we're playing the uh, edge of the cymbal with the shoulder of the stick, like so. That ride doesn't like it at all. Or like so. I made that one, I'm still not sure how I feel about it. It's kind of cool. We're not playing that heavy sort of ride that you'd use in, in rock. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lamp the bow of the cymbal, so the, the sort of main curved area of the cymbal with the shoulder of the stick to get, a, whatever, depending on what your ride likes to do when you do that, but an accented, clangy, slightly crushy sound. Something like that, you know, notoriously, the jazz drummers that we know and love always talk about how much sound there is you can get out of a cymbal. And uh, I'm sure there's some various apocryphal stories about somebody being told by the teacher to go off and find the 27,000 different tones you can produce from your ride. So, I don't know, have a mess around with that thing and see the wide range of stuff you can do with it. But that wasn't one of them. So just to start getting the feeling for that, let's just play a little crash on the and of four at the end of a bar. If we play like one bar of just time without doing anything to it, and then we're gonna play the crash on the and of four with a bass drum. So the and of four is quite a common place to add a little crashy sound. So we're gonna hit the bass and the and of four together. And once we've done that a few times, we'll replace the bass with the snare drum instead and try and get a feel for that, just to get that bit of Ooh, syncopated anticipation kind of feeling happening.
something like that. Now, let's take some of the phrases that I've uh, kindly written on a PDF. I'll, I'll attach it to this video as well. Um, but let's take some of those phrases and let's put the crash on the end of four at the end of the phrase. I, I haven't got the sheet in front of me actually, so I'm gonna make something up that's in the style of, but what you can do is take any phrase where there's a, a note on the end of four or just add a note on the end of four and learn how to combine that with, a, with the crash using the bass and or the snare, depending on what it is. So if we take this idea of, um, say, accenting the one, the and of two, and the and of four. So we go one and two and three, four and. Okay, and then we're gonna play that in a four bar, not a four bar, why am I saying that? In a two bar phrase, we'll play one bar of just time. Eventually we'll do a four bar one, but for now we'll do one bar of time, nothing, no snare and bass, just the ride. Um, and the hi-hat, of course, uh, one bar of time, and then we'll play that phrase one and two and three, four and. And this time we'll do that and we'll crash the cymbal. Sometimes we'll do it with the bass, sometimes with the snare. Okay, I've got, I've got the cymbal teeny weeny bit low, I think, and the first time I try and play that crash, I seem to miss it. Setup is important, isn't it? Anyway, so work through those phrases and get yourself used to playing the crash on the under four. And then if you get any phrases where you've got a crash on the, uh, sorry, rather there's a, one of the notes on the three, try and get used to playing the crash on the three as well and work your way through sort of crashing a bunch of different points in a particular phrase. So you're not just attached to the end of four, because there are different times where you want to take uh, accents in different places. So if we went uh, one and two, three, four, let's say we went one and two, three, four as our little phrase. Let's accent one and two, three. So we're gonna accent the three. One and two, three, four with a crash. I just realized I forgot to mention a very important little detail, which is when you're playing the crash, whichever is coming up next, whichever note's coming up next, leave a bit of a gap. So for example, when you crash the and of four, don't try and continue the ride pattern into the one. You're gonna leave that little space. You might have noticed me doing that anyway. I just forgot to mention it, but you wanna leave a little space there for the, um, symbol to kind of ring out and to, to pick up your pattern again. So when we're playing crash the and a four, you can wait to resume the ride pattern until the two. One, two, and three, four, and two, and three, four, like this. If you crash the three, again, you can wait till the four. One, two, three, four, or even just to the one. Wait until the four, wait until the one. Something like that, I'm losing the plot now. Let's, let's try that one more time. Basically the key thing is leave a little gap let the symbol ring out a little bit. If it's the and of four or the and of two, just wait until the next two or the next four coming up. Uh, if it's on the number, uh, on the one or the three, I don't know, you can then wait until the two or the four to pick it up again, or even the and of two and the and of four. See what feels right. 
So that's your crushing thing. Work through all the different phases I wrote down. And I'm, I'm going to discuss at some point, uh, when I've sort of wrapped this up, how to move forward. So I'm, I'm just giving like a, a very um, sort of easy, easily accessible, hopefully, uh, introduction to some of the stuff. But obviously there's a lot more to it and I'm going to point you in the direction you want to go. But so eventually you can do a lot more with this. Now, uh, aside from that, it's a good idea to develop the ability to accent the snare drum notes and the bass drum notes that you're playing. And so if we take those phrases again, um, you could start practicing accenting snare drum and or bass drum notes uh, by thinking about where there's longer gaps between the notes. So if I went one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four, on the end of three, there's kind of a long gap or a longer note, and um, we're going to take that and accent the snare to start with. And so remember I was talking about how we're playing our snare notes by and large quite softly. But we're going to lamp it, we're going to bring the stick up to like 45 degrees and give it a bit of an accent. No, don't listen too much to that, yeah? don't, don't get your angleometer out. Something like this. We could do the same thing on the bass. And you don't have to do it only where there are big gaps, but that would be a kind of a quite a musical way to apply accenting but go through that sheet of stuff and experiment with accenting different notes on the snare and the bass the main idea at the moment is to just kind of do battle with the mechanical side of it being able to play some softer and louder notes on the snare and bass and uh, when we start referring to some music you'll be able to use your good judgment your artistic feeling and rhythmic sense to figure out where the accents need to go uh, it's, it's slightly esoteric some of that will that's a silly word, but it's kind of um, something that you develop with feel. So you can do these exercises, uh, it helps you get the, the mechanical facility, but then the idea is to listen to the music and see what comes up naturally as a way uh, to sort of get this stuff together and not overanalyze. So let's just play a little bit and, and play a few phrases with some, some accents and the crashes a little bit, and then you can sort it all out. And that covers that little topic. A couple more videos coming up in this series. As always, I'm the world's worst self-promoter. A lot of people like me, musicians, artists, whatever, we're not very good at this sort of thing. Are you still here? If you are, if you think you like the way I explain things, my, the cut of my jib appeals to you, whatever it is, I don't know. I hate promoting myself. If you like what you see and you think, here's a chap who can help me get somewhere with my drumming, I'd like to know that I offer drumming lessons over the internet with Skype or Zoom or whatever you like, and uh, I could probably help you out with your drumming. So if you're a little bit stuck or you'd like somebody to help you just put things together and, and figure out how to move forward, or even if you're getting started, uh, get in touch with me. My contact details are below, um, and uh, let's see what I can do for you. Meanwhile, obviously, like the like button, that would be 
polite thing to do and uh, leave a comment if you like or dislike this video. I'd love to get some feedback on how this stuff, stuff comes across and whether I'm explaining things well or just talking too much. I think that wraps this one up. So you can go off and practice. <laughs>